Good morning, America. How are you? Me? I've been battling the flu, and this is the first time that I've been out of bed in like two days. Please excuse my voice. I just got it back, kind of. This video was very important, and I had to get it out to you. This is the most important news yet this year. At 4 a.m. Eastern Time yesterday, senior military leaders received a letter called the Declaration of Military Accountability. It was sent on behalf of Brad Miller and 230 other signatories. The letter is not addressed to the military leaders, but to the American people. This group of troops and veterans are pledging to the American public that they will do anything lawfully within their power to stop the destruction of our own military leadership. I will now read this letter. In the course of human events, it sometimes becomes necessary to admonish the lawless, encourage the faint-hearted, and strengthen the weak. We have reached just such a time in our history. The affairs of our nation are now steeped in avaricious corruption, and our once stalwart institutions, including the Department of Defense, are failing to fulfill the moral obligations upon which they were founded. Standing upon our natural and constitutional rights, we hereby apprise the American people that we have exhausted all internal efforts to rectify recent criminal activity within the armed forces. In the declaration of our independence of our founding fathers sought separation. We seek no separation, but though this letter and the efforts we pledge herein, we pursue restoration through accountability. We attend to rebuild trust and restore the rule of law, particularly within the armed forces. Ultimately, we strive to once again become a moral people, restoring our nation and making it again worthy of the great gift of liberty won by the colonial era of American people. While implementing the COVID-19 vaccine mandate, military leaders broke the law, trampled the constitutional rights, denied informed consent, permitted unwilling medical experimentation, and suppressed the free exercise of religion. Service members and families were significantly harmed by these actions. Their suffering continues to be felt financially, emotionally, and physically. Some service members became part of our ever-growing veteran homeless population. Some developed debilitating vaccine injuries, and some even lost their lives. In apparent attempt to avoid accountability, the military leaders are continuing to ignore our communications regarding these injuries and the laws that were broken. For General Milley, ADM Grady, General McConville, ADM Gilday, ADM Lesher, General Brown, General Berger, General Smith, VADM Kilby, VADM Noel, VADM Fuller, LTG Martin, Lieutenant General Davis, MG Edmondson, General Williams, ADM Fagan, VADM Buck, Lieutenant General Clark, MG Francis, LTG Dingle, Lieutenant General Miller, RADM Gillingham, and numerous others. These individuals enabled lawlessness and the unwilling experimentation on service members. The moral and physical injuries they helped inflict are significant. They portrayed the trust of service members and the American people. Their actions caused irreparable harm to the armed forces and the institutions for which we have fought and bled. These leaders refused to resign or take any other action to hold themselves accountable, nor have they attempted to repair the harm their policies and actions have caused. Since there has yet to be any accountability, the undersigned give our word to do everything morally permissible and legally possible to hold our own leadership accountable. We intend to rebuild trust by demonstrating that leaders cannot cast aside constitutional rights or the law for political expediency. The flag and general officers are far from the only ones complicit in recent illegal activities as a significant number of SES leaders and political appointees contributed. Evidence indicates that other executive agencies are engaging in illegal activity. However, as service members and as veterans, we feel particularly responsible for the DOD. And in accordance with our oaths, we will make every effort to demonstrate by example how an institution can put its own house in order. We, the undersigned, on behalf of hundreds of thousands of service members and the American people, while appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for guidance and purity of intention, mutually pledge to each other that we will do everything within our power through lawful word and action to hold accountable military leaders who fail to follow the law when their leadership and moral courage was most desperately needed. 
In the coming years, thousands within our network will run for Congress and seek appointments to executive branch offices, while those of us still serving on active duty will continue to put fulfilling our oaths ahead of striving for rank or position. For those who achieve the lawful authority to do so, we pledge to recall from retirement the military leaders who broke the law and will convene court martials for the crimes they committed. For those of us who attain legislative offices, we pledge to introduce legislation to remove all retirement income for the military leaders who were criminally complicit, and we will ensure none serve in or retire from the senior executive service. This endeavor will be a continuous process with a long-term time horizon, but fulfilling our oaths to defend the Constitution requires just such persistent vigilance. Likewise, we are obligated and so commit to train those who come after us to fulfill their duty in achieving this accountability and safeguard against such leadership failures hereafter. Our nation was once great because it was good. It was built on moral principles founded in natural law, and yet the recent acceleration of moral relativism has us headed toward precipitous implosion. While all good things come to an end, we refuse to allow our nation to go quietly into the depths of decadence and decay. We promise to exhaust all moral, ethical, and legal means to restore the rule of law and will begin by attempting to hold senior military leaders accountable. The Constitution is the supreme law of our land. We will fight to enforce that law and put an end to the two-tiered justice system. May future generations see our efforts, and God willing, may they also be recipients of the great gift of liberty that we have had the honor of safeguarding. Thank you to everyone who listened to this entire video. This is huge, um, not just for the military, but for all Americans. The military wasn't the only ones who were forced to take this bioweapon. Um, there were many who lost their job. Um, I'm very pleased with the fact that I owned my own business and I'm still a pure blood, but there were many that didn't have that option and um, we need to take care of them and we need to make sure that nothing like this ever happens in our country again. But buckle up everybody, this is going to be a crazy year. So be safe, be vigilant, 